goodbye color to this drink as well. Of um, salmon, beautiful hint. Enjoy the um, enjoy nations for tuning in to Good Libation. Welcome to Good Libations, our show about mixology bartending. I'm Ethel Andrews, the resident mixologist, you might say. And today we're going to source some interesting cocktails from, of all places, the British Isles. And kind of a surprise because people don't usually associate Great Britain with fine watering holes and fine cocktails. They tend to think of it as being most of, of, of all a nation of beer drinkers, imbibing ale and stout and so forth. But contrary to what you might think, and not just in London, the British Isles has become a haven for truly fine mixed drinks. And of all things, one of the drinks that we're gonna to make today is based on tequila. And they tend to be a lot more adventurous about tequila than we are over here. And a lot more refined than you might expect with their palate too. Because I was, I was expecting that things were not gonna be all that spectacular, but they actually are. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit. And this particular drink, interestingly enough, is known as the Mrs. McHugh. And supposedly it originated at a watering hole in Dublin, Ireland, but had made its way across the Irish Sea to Britain. And some places in London started making it, as well as Liverpool and Manchester, where there's a huge Irish population in the British Isles. Anyway, this particular drink is based on tequila, and it actually requires muddling of pimento and chili. And at first I thought, well, meaning, you know, an actual chili that you chop up, like I do with my spicy jalapeno margaritas. But no, you're supposed to use chili powder, which I initially found very bizarre. I thought, chili powder? You've got to be kidding. But I tried it using a regular red chili and the chili powder, and it actually worked better with the powder. So that's how we're going to make it today. Again, the Mrs. McHugh. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ingredients in that we're going to muddle. And of course, we're going to muddle those ingredients within the actual liquors before we add the ice and shake it. And we are going to dispense it in a conventional margarita glass this time because we want to kind of keep a, a touch of authenticity with the British style margarita. So I'm gonna go ahead and first of all, put the pimento in the shaker and the chili powder, which again seems odd, but it actually works very, very well. And you gotta put a fairly generous amount of the chili powder in there because we wanna give it some bite because that's the whole point of this cocktail. And yeah, the British people are great aficionados of tequila drinks and also of Mexican food in general. And at first in the 1980s, when they started having Mexican restaurants in Britain, the food was truly execrable. I mean, Taco Bell looked better than what they were presenting. But they've gotten very sophisticated, very adventurous, and on the culinary cutting edge, you might say. So things have changed completely. So now that we've added those two things, we're going to go ahead and add our modest brand of tequila. Again, you don't have to use top shelf if you're making cocktails. You want to use something fairly decent, but you don't need to use top shelf liquor. And optimally, it is nice to use Cointreau, but for the sake of most of us in our budgets, we're going to use triple sec. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that. And then we're going to go ahead and muddle these ingredients here. And as per usual, rather than using a real muddler that you have to go out and buy, the art of improvisation is good because then you can see that you can use ordinary kitchen tools, that you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on fancy barware because this will muddle just as well if you use sufficient force. And we talked about it this before, but when you're muddling, if it's something like this and it's fairly hard, you have to use more force on it 
and take a little more time with it. Whereas if you're muddling something a bit more delicate, like say raspberries or blueberries, you want to use less force. But this way it extracts the essential oils out of the pimento. So now we're going to add juice from an orange to this drink because that's what it requires. And we're going to try to squeeze it out really, really well. Yeah, whoever Mrs. McHugh was, and I'm not sure if she was the mixologist or a patron who liked this particular drink. But nevertheless, you shall see. And then we're going to add our fresh lime to the drink. Hand squeezing again to get those essential oils from the peel. And we want to put a fairly good amount of the lime too. I usually like to add more than they suggest because I think it makes a better drink when you do that. You don't want the lime to be too subtle. So we're going to go ahead and leave a spent shell in there as always. Now, some establishments that make this drink in the British Isles also add Orgier syrup, which is an almond infused syrup. But I personally feel that that lends itself better to tropical drinks than to tequila based drinks. So I leave it out, but at your own discretion, you could add it. Now we're going to go and add the ice to the drink before we shake it up. So now we're going to go ahead and shake it in dispense it in our margarita glass. Now some people of course like salt on the rim. That's not really my forte, so I don't do that. I kind of like it as it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and dispense this drink, which will have a slight pinkish hue because of the pimento and the chili powder. And this is a surprisingly good cocktail. I was skeptical at first, like I mentioned, but surprisingly good. And of course, we want our requisite garnish too, so we're going to use a little bit of the orange and a little bit of the lime to add that extra. And you could garnish it also with a bit of pimento if you wish. In fact, I think I might do that just for decorative purposes. We'll go ahead and do that if I can get it out of here. So we're going to add that as a garnish. Now, of course, the ultimate test is, will this taste good? So we're going to check that out. Oh, yes, that is so good. And again, you'll be surprised with the addition of the conventional chili powder, how good this drink tastes. And it's not a sickly sweet drink. The triple sick adds just enough sweetness to make it pleasant, but not cloying. But again, this is really a worthy drink. This is truly excellent. Again, the Mrs. McHugh, courtesy of the British Isles, of England itself and Scotland, via Dublin. And again, I always like to mention that be adventurous with your drink making. Try new things. Source new things. Um, keep your mind open about where the drinks may come from because you may be quite surprised because I was with this. The Mrs. McHugh is truly a good drink. And just make sure that you go through the, tro the proper steps with the shaker and use the chili powder and you will be quite amazed at how good it is. And I always like to mention at the conclusion of my show to drink responsibly and sensibly, to keep our community safe and well spoken of, to be careful, and to show respect for the mixologist's efforts. Again, my name is Ethel Andrews. Our show is Good Libations. And we thank you for tuning in and look forward to other episodes. And we're going to do a couple more cocktails that are found or invented, you might say, in the British Isles. Thank you again for tuning in. 
Goodbye. The proper